a show of bipartisanship takes, takes Belize closer to the International Court to settle its border dispute with Guatemala. And in sport, the former CWI Vice President Emmanuel Nansen facing a challenge for the presidency of the Windward Islands Cricket Board of Control. I'm Ricardo Robertson. This is Caribbean in 10 for Tuesday, May 21st, 2019. I'll be back with the details after the break. <laughs> The Belize government has moved one step closer to having the International Court of Justice, the ICJ, settle its territorial dispute with Guatemala. Yesterday, 12 days after Belizeans voted yes to going to that route, Parliament gave the green light to amend the Maritime Areas Act. The amendment repeals the provisions that had provided a framework to seek a negotiated definitive agreement with Guatemala and leaves in force provisions that define the maritime areas of Belize on the basis of international law. And unlike the division on the referendum, both sides of parliament voted in favor of the amendment, with the opposition People's United Party, the POP, noting that the people of Belize had spoken in the referendum and their voices had been heard. In a show of bipartisanship, opposition leader John Bresenio said, his side was willing to work with government to bring a final and definitive end to Guatemala's unfounded claim to Belize's territory. We are satisfied that these amendments are drafted as such that is in line with similar maritime legislation of other countries in our region like Jamaica and St. Lucia. Today we look to a fresh start. The Belizean people expects the PUP to work with the government. And we will do so with the understanding that there will always be full and frank disclosure and transparency throughout the process. And I thank the Prime Minister for his commitment to do so. Bersenio also urged Dean Barrow led the Dean Barrow led administration to move with equal haste to deal with the issue of the Guatemalan military preventing Belizeans from using the Sastoon River which is part of the disputed territory. We must do everything possible to urgently correct this situation. If those measures fail, and they may well do, then we implore the government to appeal to the ICJ for the much mentioned provisional measures as soon as it is humanly possible. We want back the SARS tune. Over to Haiti now, magistrates have begun a week-long strike as they demand payment of salary arrears, improved working conditions, and an end to interference in the judiciary by the executive. President of the National Association of Haitian Magistrates, Jean Wilner Morin, said the action by the magistrates is being supported by the Professional Association Magistrates and the Association of Judges of Peace. The group says it hopes the industrial action will force the government to meet the demands of its members. APM President Wando Sanvillas has criticized the working conditions in which judges uh, operate for years, noting that several negotiations have taken place with the Ministry of Justice and promises made have not been kept. He said at least 18 jurisdictions have been affected by the strike that started yesterday, and the magistrates have said they will review their options on Friday. Meanwhile, the various associations and unions representing clerical workers at the courts have announced plans for a two-day work stoppage beginning on Thursday. 
Now, the authorities have not commented on the strike by the magistrates or the impending action by the clerical workers. Criminals in Jamaica are said to be getting more organized with the security forces reporting that gangs are collaborating with each other to find ways around the law. And Major Garth Anderson, head of the Jamaica Defense Forces Western Troops, says it's time all law enforcement agencies join forces as criminals are no longer operating as separate factions. Guess what? The criminals are working together. They are not working separately. We find that we hit one community. And when you do your investigations, no longer are they in as many factions as you thought. They're actually joining forces to work against us. So why should we continue to work separately? Why should we continue to work in silos? We need to come together as one team. And this is a good indication of that. And stay with us. Your Midday Sport is next. Welcome to this year's 50th Caribbean Broadcast Union Assembly on the island of San Andres. San Andres is a small archipelago located in between Jamaica and Panama in the Western Caribbean Sea. A lush, exotic island rich in culture, history, gastronomy, and breathtaking scenic views. Known for its beaches and seven colored crystalline waters, the island of San Andres will be proudly hosting this year's event. CBU members will enjoy top-of-the-line accommodations for an unforgettable experience in San Andres, connecting Caribbean nations through this year's 50th edition of the CBU Assembly. Another challenge has been mounted against former Cricket West Indies Vice President Emmanuel Nansen, this time for the presidency of the Windward Islands Cricket Board of Control. The WICBC is expected to hold its annual general meeting this weekend in St. Lucia and high on the agenda will be the election of a new president and vice president. Nansen, who was Dave Cameron's right-hand man at the helm of West Indies cricket, is being challenged by Dr. Kishore Shallow, the current regional cricket board VP. Nansen, a Dominican national, is currently serving alongside Julian Charles of St. Lucia, Charles, who is a strong supporter of Nansen, is a former West Windward Islands cricket, cricketer and has been president of the St. Lucia National Cricket Association since 2009. Dr. Shallow, uh, however, is the Grenada uh, Cricket Board. Well, his vice president is Dwayne Gill. The election is scheduled for May 26th. And Cricket West Indies Chief Executive Johnny Grave says he does not anticipate any disruption to the squad's preparation for the ICC World Cup due to uh, that is due to schedule late arrival of key players from the Indian Premier League. Now, several players led by Vice Captain Chris Gale only joined up with the West Indies squad last Saturday for the pre-tournament camp at Rose Bowl in Southampton after completing their IPL stints. This meant that Gale, with all-rounders Andre Russell and Carlos Baffett, batsmen Evan Lewis, Shimron Hetmeyer and Nicholas Puran, and fast bowler O'Shane Thomas, all missed the just-concluded Tri-Nation series in Ireland, West Indies' last one-day assignment before the World Cup bowls off on May 30th. But unlike several other cricket boards which opted to recall its players early from the IPL, Graves said the Caribbean body believed the high-profile T20 tournament served as adequate preparation for the World Cup. That's Caribbean in 10. Join us again at 6.30 for Caribbean Newsline. Good afternoon.